right, I'm going to read Acts chapter 13, verse 20 through 22, and uh, at, uh, out of the uh, New Living Translation. It says, the God of his nation of Israel chose our ancestors and made them multiply and grow strong during their stay in Egypt. Then with a powerful arm, he led them out of their slavery. He put up with them. You hear that? He put up with them through 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Then he destroyed seven nations in Canaan and gave their land to Israel as an inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After that, God gave them judges to rule until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people begged for a king. And God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, who reigned for 40 years. But God removed Saul, underlying removed. removed. But God removed Saul and replaced him with David, a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Amen? Amen. Let's stand as we open up with prayer. Father, we thank you and we give you praise and glory and honor. We worship you and adore you. We magnify your holy and wonderful name for you are worthy to be praised. This is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and you are the strength of our life, and we thank you for what has already taken place. So, Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus to bless and to speak, Lord God, through me. Have your way in my life. I yield and submit my will to you, not my will, but your will be done. Minister to your people as only you can. Lift up a bow down, head ease a troubled heart, Lord God, set free, heal, and deliver. And we bind every demonic spirit that will try to stop, block, or hinder the word from going forth. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Bless the children as they're being ministered to. Lord God, bless the teacher who's ministering to them. And we give you the praise in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. And the church said, amen, 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 amen. and amen. You may be seated. My topic today is, where is your focus? Right. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody smile. You, you know everyone now, so you know you can just smile and just say, "Where is your focus?" Where is your focus? Look at someone else and say, "Where is your focus?" Amen. Where is your focus? Amen. I'm going to read uh, that last scripture one more time, verse 22 out of the Amplified, and it says, "And when he had deposed him, in other words, removed him." He raised up David to be their king of him who bore witness and said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will and carry out my program fully. Amen? Amen. Amen. This message is composed of three questions. The first one is, what is a heart for God? The second one is, why do we need a heart for God? And the third is, how do we develop a heart for God? One, what is a heart for God? Acts chapter 13, verse 22. We must acknowledge right off that a person after God's own heart is not perfect. Amen? We can see this in David. They are not sinless. A person who has a heart for God is a person who will do God's will. Amen? Amen. Now, underline or write down, had removed. God had removed. He removed Samuel. I mean, he removed, you know, uh, it says it was, yeah, it was China. Yes, Saul. Saul, sorry. He had removed, he had removed a change of office. So that meant it was a change of office to remove from an office. Amen? So he removed Saul from an office. But then he raised up. That meant he called forth. To call forth. Amen? And then the heart in this scripture right here, the scripture attributes to the heart as thoughts, reasonings, understanding, will, judgment, designs, affections, love, hatred, fear, joy, sorrow, and anger. These things can be can affect a man's physical heart. 
So therefore, the word heart in this scripture, scripture is used as a metonym or as another word for a, a mind. Okay? Now, we know that, um, I always tell you that the mind is made up of our mind, our will, and our emotions. Amen? So it is used for another word, another word like mind. And you hear all that, that's in it. Judgment, designs, affections, love, hatred, fear, joy, sorrow. All that deals with our mind. All right? Now, the word do means to make. Make sure whatever he's involved in is going to bring about my will. So when he said he will do what I desire for him to do, he will produce my will. The outcome of his actions, the end results of what he's doing is going to produce the will of God. To construct the will of God, even if he's building something, he's building the will of God. My actions, my activities, my life is about, is about doing the will of God. Amen? Amen? That's something that we all have to have a mindset to say. So repeat after, see, my, after me, say, my actions, my, my activities, my, activities, my, activities, my life. Right. It's about doing the will of God. It's about doing the will of God. When you finally see all what he has done, you will see it was the will of God. Amen? Amen. And the word will, it's connected to the word purpose. Say purpose. Purpose. It is also used of the execution of God's will by others with reference to what God has ordained. Amen? Amen. So, these are different things that the Lord will use. And, and when you hear words, I want you to pay attention to what is being said. Amen? Amen. So to look at this, we're going to compare uh, Saul and David. Saul was after his own will more than God's will. David, he desired to do God's will. Saul, he wanted to win battles. While David wanted to wanted God to be glorified. Pass the buck. Saul passed the buck when he uh, when God confronted him, right? right? About his sin. But David asked for forgiveness. Right. So you can see the difference between Saul and David. When God confronts you with your sin, are these excuses or do you do you use excuses or do you take ownership and admit that you were wrong? My God. David said, I was wrong, I sinned. Psalm 51, verses 10 through 12 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. And uphold me with a willing spirit. Amen? Amen. The English uh, version says, and make me willing to obey you. Thank you. Amen? Amen? The will of God. Where is your focus? You see, a man after God's own heart is simply one who desires to do the will of God. Amen. God's leader is one who is going to lead the people where God wants to take him, not where he wants them to go. Then and only then are we ready to minister to God's people, whatever you call, whatever you're called to do. That's when we're ready. When it becomes to the point where it's not my will, but your will be done. Why do we need a heart for God? Because we want to finish well. Amen. I want to finish well. Amen. 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 We didn't get into this Christian journey to mess up or miss out on heaven. Amen. 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 Look at somebody and repeat after me. I'm doing that a lot today. Amen. The only way to hear well done. The only way to hear well done. Is to do well. Amen. Amen. Look at someone else because we need to hear that. Amen. All right. The only way to hear well done is to do well. Amen. King Solomon, the son of David, had the biggest and best of everything. But when 
he finished, it wasn't done well. All right. yeah. See, it makes a difference, amen? amen? You can have a lot of things and you can make a lot of accomplishments, but if it's not in the will of God, you haven't made it well. All right. You haven't done it well. His heart wasn't towards God like his father. His father was David. Now, God had just said, I want to have David because he's, he's following my heart. He's after my heart. But he raised a son that didn't have the same mindset. All right. Isn't it amazing how Solomon grew up under a man who was after God's heart but missed the heart of God? My God. That's something in itself. I don't want to do that. Amen. Amen. First Kings chapter 11, verse 4 in the Amplified says, For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, mm -hmm. and his heart was not perfect, complete, and whole, whole with the, with the Lord his God, as was with the heart of David his father. Solomon could have benefited from his own words when he said, Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it flows the issues of life. Yes. See, so he had wisdom. Yes. Remember, he asked. Yes. And God gave it to him. But he didn't finish well. My God. It's amazing how he can write it, teach it, preach it, but still not live by it. My God. It's yes. amazing how we can write it, teach it, preach it, but not live by it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Solomon was the wisest man on the earth. Kings from afar came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. But what he was missing was a heart for God. Amen. He started well because his request pleased God. He asked for wisdom to properly lead the people of God. But he allowed relationships to change his heart for Amen. God. Amen. Look at somebody and say, who you hooked up with? <laughs> Who's your friend? <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> we must remember God wants a relationship with you and me. Not your gifts. Not your talents. Not your wisdom. You know, people smile on their wisdom. You, when you think you know a lot, you stretch your stuff. I'm pausing there. See All that? right. When you think you know a whole lot, God will teach you that you don't know anything. Amen. 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 My mom used to say, yeah, 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 they got uh, book sense, but no common sense. All right. Amen. 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 Not your gifts, not your talents, not your wisdom, your knowledge or ministry. He doesn't want any of that. God desires an intimate relationship with you. That's good. Solomon allowed his relationships to turn his heart away from God. Mm. When you're in a relationship that you begin to compromise your standards and how you speak and where you go or how often you come to church and the things that you're faithful to and reading your scriptures and all that thing, then you are in the wrong relationship. Amen. If it caused you to compromise in any area of your life, if you used to give your tithes, but now you have to spend the money to do something else, you are compromising. You're in the wrong relationship. Amen. Don't allow things or people to change your heart. Amen. If you must choose between the two, always choose Jesus. Amen. 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 Always choose Jesus. You might find yourself comparing yourself to others in the body of Christ, in your business, or our church with another church, or ministry God called you to do. It can take your heart away from God. See, so you didn't compromise anything, but you start comparing yourself. Uh -huh. And it can take your heart away from God. So remember, God may allow you to be tested in this way to find out where your heart is. Amen. Is it towards God or is it towards to be seen before men? Amen. Right now. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 out of the Amplified says, In him we also were made great 
God's heritage portion, and we obtain an inheritance, for we have been foreordained, chosen, and appointed beforehand in accordance with his purpose, who works out everything in agreement with the counsel and design of his own will. So in other words, in his will, his way, we need a heart for God for the sake of even our seeds. Yeah. Amen? Amen. We need it for our children Amen. Right. and our children's children. Thank you, Lord. First Kings chapter 11, verse 32, Amplify says, But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. Isn't that something? Amen. Out of all, yeah. he chose one tribe, and it was David. 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 4. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem, setting up his son after him and establishing Jerusalem. 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 34, amplifies says, For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake, that's God, and for my servant David's sake. 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 6 says, and then, uh, I, I, I want to explain this a little bit before I read the scripture. He's taught, this is Isaiah. He had, Isaiah had a word from, uh, from the Lord to give to Hezekiah. So this is the word that uh, he had given a word to Hezekiah from the Lord. And the Lord was telling him, you got to get yourself together. You know, he said, get your house in order because you're getting ready to go. Yeah. 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 And that was the word. So I, I said, hmm. I thought about that and I said, you know what? Everybody looks for a word from the Lord. Do you know that there are times that the Lord give a word and it's not something you want to hear? Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Just because we prophesy it is always good, but there are times when it's coming for yeah. correction. Amen. Or it's Amen. telling you to get yourself together, otherwise you're going to miss out on something else. My God. Amen. So it come, a, a word will come. So uh, the thing is, are you ready to hear it? Amen. 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 The heart of God. Amen. Amen. So in verse 6, it says, I will add to your life. So Hezekiah heard the word from the Lord, and guess what? He got it together. Yes, when they told him, when, I, when Isaiah went in there and told him, you better get your, uh, get your house out of order because you're getting ready to die. He turned his face to the wall, and he began to cry out to God. Amen. And the Lord heard him, and before I, uh, Isaiah had to leave the court, he said, go back and talk to him. Yep. Go ahead and tell him that he get 15 more years to live. Amen. So he went back and he told him in verse 6, I will add to your life 15 years and deliver you and this city Jerusalem out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Is it a, is something? Amen. He's saying for my sake, but for David and his kids too. Yes. Don't, don't, in other words, God will do for your seed. Yes. Amen. And for your sake, yes. 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 if you have a heart for God, yes. it will bring the favor of God to the next generation. Yes. Who wants the favor of God to the next generation? Amen. Amen. Like I do. Amen. 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 So why should we have to have a heart for God? One, we want to finish well. Yeah. I want to finish well. What about you? Yes. Two, for the sake of the seed, for the sake of our children and our children's children for the next generation. It would be remiss of me to tell you that you need to have a heart for God and not tell you how to get a heart for God. All right. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. It says, and when he had deposed him, meaning when he got rid of Saul, he raised up David to be their king. For, uh, to be their king of him, he bore witness and said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will and carry out my program fully. And when he had removed Saul, he raised up David. Thank you, Lord. For them, David as king, to whom he also gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do my will. I know I read that scripture twice, but I want you to hear it in your spirit. Uh -huh. Who did his will. And that's what we have to be uh, in a place in our mind. I want to do his will. Amen? What did God do in this verse? God will, I want you to think about it. He removed Saul. God will 
remove whomever he needs to remove to put you where you're supposed to be when you're in God's will. Amen? He will do it. First, God removed Saul. But David was preserving Saul. He was trying to watch out for him, but he had to allow God to remove Saul. And there are times you have to allow God to do what he's going to do. Amen. Don't try to cover it up. Don't try to fix it up. Just let God be God and you be quiet. Amen. Amen. Because he does all things well. Amen. Second, God raised David. Don't raise yourself. Let God do that. Amen. And the third thing, God testified of David. Can you imagine God testifying of you? Wouldn't that be nice to know that he testified? Amen. You can't get better at advertising than God. Amen. Which brings the next question. What is God's testimony over you? Think about it, Selah. What is God's testimony over you? If God was called to the witness stand and had to give a testimony of your life, what would God be saying about your life? Can he say, have you considered my servant? And the fourth thing I want you to think about is God found. He's not looking for the most talented. He found David. He chose David. He's not looking for the most talented. He's not looking for the most eloquent. He's not looking for the most gifted, the most educated, or the best looking. Amen? Amen. I thank God that he's not looking for all those things because I don't, I don't meet up to them. Right. And my grammar is not perfect. Amen. But he still allowed me to speak yeah. to his people. Yeah. Isn't that a blessing? Amen. He, what he is looking for is the heart. Yeah. When Samuel went to Jesse's house looking for David, Jesse brought out the best of his sons. Mm -hmm. He thought. Amen. But God is not looking at the outward appearance of a man's heart. But he's looking, he's, he's, not, he's not looking for the outward appearance, but he's looking at the heart of a person. Amen. You can be on the backside of a desert and God will find you. Yes. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. These are Bible characters. Yeah. You can be on your, on your road to kill Christians and God will find you. Yeah. Amen. You can be taking care of the sheep and God will find you. Yeah. You can be up in a sycamore tree watching Jesus as he's passing by, and he will find you. Yeah. You can be in a nightclub, and God will find you. Right now. You can be strung out on crack or any other addiction, and God will find oh, you. Yeah. You can be having sex outside of your marriage, and God will find you. You can be full of pride, Hallelujah. and God will find you. Hallelujah. You can be full of pain and brokenness, Hallelujah. and God will find you. Amen. God knows where you are, and let me tell you what sends a signal up to God. What begins to blast through the demons in hell. What begins to knock away the principalities and powers that are holding you back. It's a signal coming from your heart crying out, saying, God, I want to do your will. Amen. Not my will, but your will be done. Amen. I make myself available to you. Not my will, but your will be done. Lord, I don't care about anything else. I tried it. And I tried to make it happen. And I wanted to present myself a certain way, but I don't care about any of that anymore. Lord, not my will, yes, but your will be done. Yes. God found him. People may pass over you, but God knows where you are, and he knows what it takes for you to surrender totally to him. Can anybody get a witness to that? Yeah, I've been there. I know. I understand brokenness. Amen. He has a way to break us down. To the point where you just don't care anymore. Get rid of all the stuff that you used to hold on to. Just strip you naked. And make you see yourself the way he see you. 
and then clean you up to let you see yourself the way you want to show you how you already saw you before you were in your mother's womb. Amen. But it's a process. Amen. And guess what? It doesn't feel good. If you're a child of God and you're, a wonder, and you're wondering if God has forgotten you, he hasn't forgotten you. But he will taste, test your faithfulness. Yes, he He's looking at your loyalty to him. If you haven't come to God yet, he hasn't forgotten you. He's just waiting for you to call out to him. Amen. Psalms 51 verse 17 amplifies says, My only sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. Don't tell him what accomplishments you've made. Amen. You pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps. You made this happen and you made that happen. You didn't make nothing happen. The only reason why you're breathing is because you have God's breath to be made inside of you. And whenever he decides to cut it, you're dead. So we've never done anything. We didn't survive nothing unless a God allowed us to survive. Amen? And so he want us broken. A broken and contract heart. Broken with sorrow for sin, thoroughly patient. Such, oh God, you will not despise. Amen. When you can come before the Lord broken, then he can do something with you. Yes, One thing I have learned, when God finds you, everyone else will find you. You try to make everybody know who you are, and they stay you and walk right on around you. Okay. But when you allow God to find you, when everyone else didn't think you were, uh, were of any value, when God declares that you are precious in his sight, yes. then you are valuable to him, everyone else will see you as valuable. Yes. But it's, it's not you. Yes. It's God who will stamp that on you. Amen. How do we have a heart for God? Turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm almost finished. Amen. God is trying to speak to us. Amen. 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 And he wants us to do something. But the only way we can do it is if we learn to say, not my will, your will be done. Amen. 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 When we can do that, then God can do something. So this is when David was fighting, fighting the Philistine and and, he, and then he was walking around and prancing and talking about what he was going to do, how he had his sword and how he had his spear and how he had his javelin and what he was going to do and all this and all that. But then David, who just had a little sling, said, today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your hand. You hear that? And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword. <laughs> Isn't that something? Amen. But uh, not with sword. He says, but he said, I, I, you know, the Lord's going to get all the glory of this. Amen. Amen. Not with the sword, not with the javelin. No, God's going to know. They're going to know that God is the one who did this. Amen? Amen. And, and God is the God of Israel. Amen? Amen? And everyone assembled there will know that the Lord rescued his people, not with sword and spear. Amen. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you, uh, and he will give you to us. So some of us, and all of us at different times in our lives, try to do things on our own. Yes. Yes. We try to make things happen out of our own strength, out of our own might, out of our own intelligence, out of our own finances. Yes. But God said, yes. it's not by might nor by power, yes. but by God's spirit. Yes. Amen? Yes. And, and, and when we get the revelation, it's nothing, nothing, nothing that I can do to make anything happen. And everything that I have accomplished is because of God. Then we can get no further, and then there's going to come a time when God will break you. Amen. Yes. We all have a call on our life. Yes. And we all have things to do. Yes. 
But he's not going to use us in the capacity that we desire or the visions that he showed you until you become broken. And allow him to pour into you what he wants to do and remove the stuff that you thought you had going on in your life. Our walk with God should give us a desire. Hallelujah. To walk with God. Amen. Why? Why? Why do we want to walk with him? Have a desire to bring glory to God. Why do you want to do what you do? Is it to bring glory to God? Or to you? Amen. Amen. Is it to let people know that God is alive? And love them? Or look at you as some spiritual giant? What is motivating you to do what you do? Pulse. See love. What is motivating you to do what you do? Because only what we do for Christ will last. Amen. As a pastor, I have seen plenty of people in their last days taking their last breath. And none of them, any of them standing on that bed said, I wish I would have made a little bit more money. Well, amen. Amen. Accolades from everybody else. No. Oh, man. That's not. When they take their last breath, some of them are breathing hard and don't, and you know, and they're troubled. But then there are some who just close their eyes, take their last breath, and go to sleep. Amen. Which one will you be? Our walk with God should give us a desire and others a desire to walk with God. Amen. Remember this for the rest of your life. I've seen plenty of five-fold ministries where they have a, 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 a whole group walking with them. And they all have the spirit of Leviathan. Pride. We're not here. Don't, don't, don't be walking and, and trying to... It's not about that. Amen. What we're supposed to be worshiping is God. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm not saying you're not supposed to respect five-fold ministry. Yes. But make sure it's in the right perspective. Amen. And the one who is being honored and the one who is looking and, and they're receiving it, make sure you're giving God the glory. Because you couldn't do anything without him. Amen. Our walk with God should give us a desire and others a desire to walk with God. Remember this for the rest of your life. Your, I, I, I want you to, I, I, I highlighted this because I want this in your spirit. Your talent doesn't become a gift until God becomes the owner of it. Amen. Amen. Your talent doesn't become a gift until God becomes the owner of it. Amen. Psalms 37 verse 4, delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires and secret petitions of your heart. The word delight means to be soft or pliable. Desire means to request or petition. Amen. Part means the total, the, the totality of man's inner or immaterial nature. So in other words, delight means to be soft and pliable in the Lord. And he will give you a request or a petition. He will give you what he wants you to want. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's not what you think. It's what he thinks. He'll put it in there. And it says, and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Heart. He will give you the totality of your, immater your uh, inner man, your immaterial nature. So if you really want a heart for God, just ask for it. Yes. Yes. If Jesus were to stand before you right now, and he would ask you what you desire of him, would you ask, what would your one request be? You have one request, and he's willing to fulfill that request. What would your request be? Money or greater anointing to be more skillful in your gifts or fame and, and talents? Last but not least, or would it be just a closer relationship with him? Yes. 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 I encourage you to let that be. 
your desire. Amen. A closer relationship with him. Right? Amen. Because everything else is not going to benefit you any other way. Amen. Amen. Don't be the person with the belly of regrets lying on their deathbed uh -huh. saying, I wish I had a better relationship with my kids. I wish I had a, a better relationship with my wife. I wish I would have showed them how much I appreciated them. I wish I honored my parents. I wish I would have forgiven so-and-so. Because I spent all these years holding things against an animosity and it hasn't gotten me anywhere. And now I'm dying. All right. Don't be that person. Where is your focus? Let's say that. 